Hello, this is a demonstration video of new Svex framework for developing SOLIDWORKS add-ins. Let me start by creating a new class library project in Visual Studio. This will be a project of our add-in. I can target my project to .NET Framework 4.0 or NUVA. Now I need to add Svex dependency into my project and I can just browse it directly from the NuGet library. So just type codestack.svex.addin. You need to check include pre-release checkbox as this library is currently in pre-release mode. This package will install the framework as well as all solvers interrupts required for that project. In order to use the framework, I need to inherit my main adding class from SWAddingX class. It is not recommended to embed solvers interrupt into the project when developing solvers add-ins. I will just select all my interrupts and set embed interrupt types option to false. Finally, I need to set my project to register for com interrupts in the build tab. I can use the auto register attribute from the Svex framework to register my add-in in SOLIDWORKS. I can give my add-in name and description in the attribute parameters. I will also need to make my class com visible. I can use a com visible attribute to do that. I can start SOLIDWORKS directly when debugging that project to simplify the process. I only need to provide the path to SOLIDWORKS executable into the debug start external program option. Now let's add some commands to our add-in. You can override the onConnect function from the framework to catch the moment when add-in is loaded and add some commands. Framework is greatly simplified the process of creating the comments in add-in. It is required to define the enumerator with the list of comments you want to see in your add-in. For now, I will create a single export parasolid command. To create those commands, I need to call add command group function and I need to specify the enumerator as my template parameters. The signature of that method is void function which expects your command as a parameter. And I simply need to pass a pointer to that function to my add command group. Now we can start debugging and launch SOLIDWORKS. Let me put the breakpoint in my own command click, so I will receive a callback when my button is clicked. The callback is received and ID of my command is passed to the function. Uh, as you can see for now, uh, my command does not have an icon and as well it just named exactly the same as my enumerator class. So let's now customize that behavior. Framework provides multiple attributes to add an attribution to the commands, such as a title attribute. The value of that attribute will be used as a common name. Similar description attribute allows to provide the hint string for your command. The same attributes can be applied to command group itself. Let's start SOLIDWORKS and see the results. As you can see, my commands and command group has been properly renamed. Finally, let's add some icons to our commands. Svex framework supports PNG files with a transparency as a command icon. Let's add several icons to my project resources. I should use the icon attribute from the framework to assign the image to my command. I need to specify the type of the resource class as my first parameter and I need to specify the name of the resource which holds the icon. By using the name of keyword I will avoid using of magic strings and whenever my resource will be renamed this will be renamed as well. And again I will assign icon to my command group itself. So I will just copy that attribute put it under the command group and just use different resource name. I can assign some additional options to my command such as visibility. So do I want to see it in menu or toolbar? And if this command is going to export components, I would like to specify the workspace to be an assembly only. So this command will be disabled in other environments. I will change the path to my debug SOLIDWORKS as I have a model in 2018, so I just want to debug that SOLIDWORKS version. 
So under the debug, I just need to change the path to my uh, software 2018. Now you can see that my command has an icon and it is also disabled when there is no assembly open. So let me just open the assembly. And I should see uh, my toolbar as well. And you can see that this command is now enabled. I will now implement the actual exporting process. So I will grab the command and do a switch on it as I'm going to add more commands uh, next. So I will grab the selected component. I'm going to check uh, the null references as my components might not be selected in the view. So in this case, uh, there is nothing to export. So uh, my component can also be uh, lightweight or suppressed. So in this case, my model doc will be null. So I will check that case as well. I will be exporting my components to the export folder uh, next to the main assembly folder. So I will compose my export file pass accordingly. I will add one more exception here. So when my command is not parsed, I will know about that. So now let's start solos and test this command. I'm just going to open assembly. And here's my export folder. I select component, click the button. This is the handler. I can just quickly check that my code is correct. My file path seems to be correct. Save as and I should see that file into the export folder. Now, if I do not select any component and click that button, uh, I should go to the exception. So I go here and here's going to be an exception. To enhance user experience, I would like to disable my button if no component selected. So fortunately, framework provides a callback for enabling the button on based on customized logic. Similarly to callback handler, I have an enable handler, which expects a command ID as a first parameter and passes the command state as a second parameter. Now I just need to pass the pointer to that function to my add command group method. The state command will be pre-calculated based on my workspace. So if it is not an assembly, it will be disabled. If it is an assembly, it will be enabled. So I need to additionally check if my component is selected and if it is not, I would like to disable the command. Let's start solders and see the behavior. So I'll just open that assembly again. And uh, when I select the component, the button is enabled. When I select something which is not a component, the button is disabled. So when I click, uh, it still exports my model. That means that our else block should be never executed. So I can just put the uh, assert here. So if I ever come to that block, it means that something gone wrong. Now let me add more buttons in here to export edges and step. And with Swex framework, it is as simple as copying that enum command and just giving it a different name. And I only need to modify my handler to give different extension based on the command ID. I would like to also modify the way my commands are rendered. Instead of the toolbar or menu, I want to use a context menu for the component. So I will just use add context menu command and specify a component type as a select type of that context menu. Let's start solders and test. I will open assembly again. So I don't see my uh, commands in toolbar anymore, but I can find them under the context menu. Export components, export to edges. 
and right mouse button again and export to parasolid and now in my export folder I can see two files please follow the link in the description of this video for more information about the framework thank you for your time